This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Hello, I'm Bob Iger, the owner of Disney, both the company and the human being. For years, Disney has been the masters of imaginative, family-friendly entertainment. But every once in a while, we just like to slum it. You know what I'm talking about. From our TV specials that were literally just advertisements for our attractions, to our mediocre live-action films in the 70s, to our direct-to-DVD sequels in the 90s and early 2000s, to the Out of Our Shells tour, except we actually showed you the poor kids outside of their costumes. Well, recently we've discovered another spectacular wave of not trying with our Disney live-action remakes. None of you like them more than the original, yet for some reason you see them in buttloads. I don't know the reason why, and I could care less. This is literally what my swimming pool looks like. We're not here to understand it, merely exploit it. That's why I give you our next phase in half-acidness, animated remakes of our live-action remakes. You all can't wait to see our live-action remake of The Lion King, can you? Um, what's live-action about it? The ground. Well, we know you love having James Earl Jones back as Mufasa, so not only are we bringing him back, but also Matthew Broderick, Jeremy Irons, Whoopi Goldberg, and the rest. Their voices will be placed in the hand-drawn characters that we're literally tracing from the live-action remake of our timeless classic. You can see all our animators working tirelessly to bring this to you. Hello, I'm an animator. I tell you my name, but I'm creatively bankrupt. As you can see, we're taking the live-action Lion King and perfecting it with hand-drawn imagery in a way you've never seen before. Yeah, this looks like the original Lion King. No, it's something you've never seen before. It's clearly the same thing. Buy that man, then fire him. From the circle of life to Hakuna Matata to literally every frame of the movie, Disney is bringing to life all your favorite scenes once more. Feel the magic of something completely new, completely original, completely Disney. Not interested in seeing it? You will anyway, because Disney has you. We have 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 you. Coming soon, the animated remake of the live-action remake of the animated Lion King. Disney. You're just gonna have to put up with this for a while. And if you like that, wait until you see our Japanese export. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. The Lion King. I know, right? A YouTuber cashing in on the live action one coming out? Weird! The 1994 Disney Smash was a phenomenon unlike anything Disney had seen in years. True Frozen seems to be the queen of Disney's anime films right now, but back then, there was only one Lion King. Riding the powerhouse of animated hits that gained bigger and bigger box office, being the highest grossing animated film for several years, and marveled as one of Disney's most profitable films, Lion King was a gold standard any studio back then, or even now, could be blown away by. <laughs> Okay, let me make this clear off the bat. I actually really enjoy this movie. It's got a grand scale, it's epic storytelling, it's gorgeous animation. It's one of the few films where if there's ever a re-release on the big screen, I'll always go check it out because it's such an experience. But with that said, when it first came out, I never saw it as the flawless masterpiece everyone declared it. But don't get me wrong, there is still a lot to admire. So on the 25th anniversary of one of Disney's biggest hits, I've decided to go over what works about The Lion King, what doesn't, and figure out if it deserves all the credit it's gotten over the years. So let's look over a film that everyone declares is so perfect they'll happily celebrate a remake claiming they can do it better! This is The Lion King. I think this intro is ingrained in everyone's minds as the world's most epic baby shower takes place celebrating the birth of the Lion Prince, Simba and all the animals gather to celebrate probably their murderer in the next several years. Aww, what the animals call the circle of life, we call it dictatorship. Cute! 
The song is decent, the scope is vast, the animation amazing, yet something seems different since I last saw it. It is different. I mean, it's not a big difference, but has anyone noticed that Simba and Rafiki are still in the original, but moving in the Blu-ray? Honestly, there's quite a few changes like that, which seem rather random. The gators look different and can't wait to be king. Scar moves differently when looking at Simba. The big love song has a different layout. Even the letters in the dust spelling SFX or sex are gone. Again, it's minor, but part of appreciating why something was so impressive is taking in every part of the original. Even the tiniest flaw is a representation of the original work of art. You know, for all the people that go nuts when Lucas changes something, nobody's bitching or complaining about this! Though maybe it's because they left Scar shooting first. Long live the king. Speaking of which, after the ceremony, the brother of the king named Scar, played by Jeremy, surprisingly more like a cartoon when he's not animated irons, mopes at how he will never be king. Zazu, played by Rowan Atkinson, lets him know that his brother Mufasa is on his way. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to play with your food? Oh, now look, Zazu, you made me lose my lunch. It's great seeing two of the most brilliant British actors of our time make food puns. He's approached by King Mufasa, voiced by James Earl Jones. Why, if it isn't my big brother descending from on high to mingle with the commoners? <laughs> He's such a bitch! <laughs> that hairball is my son and your future king. Oh, I shall practice my curtsy. I literally have no choice but to use the same joke. He's such a bitch. <laughs> Some time goes by and Prince Simba, voiced by Jonathan Taylor Thomas, is shown by his father how to be a noble king. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Everything the light touches? What about that shadowy place? That's reserved for me, son. And yeah, you ever notice how one-sided this circle of life is? Here's their bullshit way around it. Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. Still sounds like a shitty deal for the antelope. Yes, but our bodies become fertilizer, so it's fair. Yeah, fertilizer doesn't hunt us or decide when we die, Dad. I mean, how many antelope does one lion kill compared to the grass that one of our bodies will leave behind? Okay, it's Darwinism. It doesn't sound as pretty, but I can't help it if the chips conveniently fall in our direction. You just exploit it. Now you're sounding like a true king. Did someone say more animal puns? The buzz from the bees is that the leopards are in a bit of a spot. I told the elephants to forget it, but they can't. Cheetahs never prosper. Zazu, would you turn around? Wait, I have more animal jokes from my kindergarten book. What's going on? A pouncing lesson. Oh no, sire, you can't be serious. Do it or you're singing the morning report song. Oh, that's two minutes the audience would never get back. <laughs> <laughs> Simba goes to visit his uncle Scar, who taunts him with what's in the Shadowlands. An elephant graveyard is no place for a young prince. Oop. Whoa. Oh dear, I've said too much. You're going to make my mascara run. Simba obviously wants to go to the elephant graveyard, so he asks his friend Nala, played by Nikita Kalami, if she wants to come with. So where are we going? It better not be any place dumb. No, it's really cool. Should I put a sensor bar over this? Feels wrong somehow. Around the water hole. The water hole? What's so great about the water hole? That's as crazy as me being replaced with a white woman when I grow up. The mothers say they can go, but only if Zazu accompanies them. Then Zazu makes it weird. You two are going to be married! Yeah. Ew. I can't marry her. She's my friend. And seeing how there's only three males in this group of lions and they're all related, probably more! Kinda messed up when you really think about it! Uh, da -da -da -da, play the song! I'm gonna be a mighty king! Simba goes on about how he can't wait till he sings I Mean to Be King, as we partake in the feel good song that usually focuses on the comic relief getting tortured and surprisingly the hardest level on the Super Nintendo game. Damn monkeys, what direction are you supposed to face? Get me out of this watering hellhole! They lose Zazu under a rhino's ass, if I had a nickel, as Simba and Nala make it to the elephant graveyard as well as some unfriendly company. I know you. You're Mufasa's little stooge. Yeah, this is during that weird time when Whoopi Goldberg had it in her contract whatever character she played had to look like her. I'm very okay not having that because I look like a bearded version of the farmer from Courage the Cowardly Dog. 
What have we got here? I don't know, Shenzi. What do you think, Ed? <laughs> Can we all agree Ed is the best character? I like Timon and Pumbaa. Everyone else? Yeah, it's Ed. What's that? You haven't heard enough food puns yet? We could have whatever is lying around. Make mine a cub sandwich. We ordered this dinner to go, cuz there it goes! What do you want? Robin Williams literally took the fourth wall with him in the last movie. This is the best we can do! Mufasa saves them, though, as he has to teach his son a lesson. I've got to teach my son a lesson. Simba, <sighs> good luck. Don't be like your other brothers and sisters. What other brothers and sisters? Exactly! Mufasa teaches Simba about responsibility in a line I think is actually more relevant now than it ever was before. Simba, being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. But the internet says otherwise. Oh, Christ! Twitter says I should always be offended. What did I tell you about them? They need to see more physical people. And the sun! They need to see the sun! Come here, you. Oh, no, no! <laughs> they patch things up pretty quickly, as I'm kind of wondering if Nala is getting the same treatment from her parents. What do you mean you almost got our future king killed? Oh, I bet Simba's father is talking nice to him. <laughs> Dad? Mm. We're pals, right? <laughs> right. And we'll always be together, right? <laughs> Sorry, old habits die hard. He tells Simba that if they ever part, he can find the kings of the past in the sky. I mean, not literally, but oh, okay, literally. Uh, not sure how he knew that, but whatever. But it looks like Scar is angry that the hyenas didn't kill off the young prince. I just hear that name and I shut up. Mufasa. Ooh. Do it again. Mufasa. Ooh. Mufasa, Ooh. Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> you know, if these were Whoopi's co-hosts on The View, it'd be such a better show. Thus we partake in, I'm just gonna say it, the best damn song in the movie. Be yeah, hell with can't wait to be king. Screw can you feel the love tonight. Piss on Hakuna Matata. This is the song I listen to over and over on the soundtrack. It's just an epic villain song, even despite Irons Rex harassing the entire number by talking through it. Be prepared for sensational news. Yeah, why don't we have Jim Cummings do the rest? Actually, no joke. Legendary voice actor Jim Cummings sings the last third of the song because apparently Irons couldn't hit the final notes. But Cummings is such a master that for years nobody could tell the difference. And injustice deliciously swear. Be prepared for the murkiest scam. Next, you'll be telling me he did the same thing for Christopher Lloyd. That dude's not human! He's right there. See, kids, what we're trying to get across is hyenas are Nazis. I don't know why we're trying to get that across, but in a movie where two of the blackest people you can find give birth to two of the whitest people you can find, it's best not to question things. Be prepared. Yep, even years later, this song is still damn awesome. Just slap Iron Maiden on the album cover and we'll be good. Ding dong! Hi there, did somebody order a Doug? No, I did not order a Doug. But it says right here, somebody ordered a Doug. How could I order a Doug? I'm Doug. Well, who else could have ordered a Doug but Doug? I think when I was shopping online, someone stole my information, made another me, and then sold me to me, delivered by me. Yeah, sounds right. Ah! Fool, you should have gotten expressvpn.com. Why'd I turn this way? I'm listening. Without a VPN, your credit card information is wide open to hackers when you're online shopping. I wasn't listening, could you say that again? Without a VPN, your credit card information is wide open to hackers when you're online shopping. Thank you. If a hacker discovers your information online, they can spend your money and access your shopping accounts, all because you didn't have ExpressVPN protection. Now those are words. ExpressVPN encrypts your internet data, preventing others from sniffing your information over the network. Shop online with peace of mind, thanks to ExpressVPN. Well, I suppose I'll get ExpressVPN right now. They have the fastest speed. There's more! Consistently faster than other VPN providers. 
VPN has server locations in 94 countries, giving you plenty of options to choose from. Apps for every device, Windows, iOS, Android, Macs, Linux, router, and more. It's easy to use. You can connect with just one click. It sounds like internet without restrictions. You can securely stream or download content from anywhere, anytime. How come the camera's not on you now? I forgot to get a shot of me saying that. Oh. It's the market-leading VPN, rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar. It's less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Well, as someone who does a lot of online shopping, I know I'm always going to use ExpressVPN. That makes me so happy I'm going to turn into the ExpressVPN fairy. Look, listen, look, That's listen, magical. Look, and right listen, now you can get three listen, months listen, free. Listen, That's right, listen, three listen, months free. Listen, Will you shut listen, up? Okay, God! Three months free. Take back your internet privacy today by going to the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash NostalgiaCritic. That's ExpressVPN.com slash NostalgiaCritic to get three months free. What am I supposed to say to that? Take back your privacy today with ExpressVPN. So Scar lures Simba into a canyon where he says he has a surprise waiting for him. Will I like the surprise? Simba, it's to die for. Seen it, underrated. Simba works on his roar, thinking he started a stampede, when really, it was the hyenas. And aside from the intro and be prepared, this is the main reason to see this on the big screen. The music, the shots, the animation, the adrenaline. I still get chills watching it. It's an amazing scene. Damn it, son, this time your punishment won't be talking stars, it'll be black holes. I'm talking real Stephen Hawking shit. I'll go back for home, that's what I'll do. I'll go back for home. Funny how Zazu can make jokes flattened under a rhinoceros, yet a light slap knocks him out. Tell the Flintstones I'm still suing. Ah! Mufasa saves Simba, and I blame bad parenting for what you're about to see here. Because when you name one kid Mufasa meaning king, and the other kid Scar meaning Scar, aren't you just begging for something like this to happen? Long live the king. Why, thank you. I think I'd do a good job myself. <laughs> As the dust clears, Simba goes down to see what he can find. Dad? Hey, kid, can you give me directions? I'm so lost. And eh, never mind. By the way, your father's dead. Okay, so another parent dies in a Disney film. Big deal. It's actually comical how many times this happens. But the one thing that separates this from the other Disney films? They show the body. That is hardcore. Granted, it's a very clean-looking body for having been trampled to death. Oh, wait, there's a bent whisker. No open casket for him. Sorry, even for me, that's really dark. But regardless, this is a tough scene to get through. And as much as we like to make fun of the whole JTT craze that was going on at the time, he acts this perfect. Dad, we gotta go home. It's built up well, it's animated perfect, it doesn't cop out on the harsh stuff. It delivers the exact emotion they want you to feel to a point where when Scar shows up, it was hard not to hear an entire theater of kids go, Simba. Oh, hey, Scar, what's that surprise you were talking about? The king is dead. Scar, rather than just kill him, convinces him that he's to blame and even throws in this weird line. <gasps> what will your mother think? You're grounded. Run away and never return. Scar tells him to run away and sends the hyenas after him to finish the job. Yeah, not cutting to any pretty birds like you did with Bambi after his parent died. No, no. Your uncle, who you thought loved you, is sending his evil minions to rip you to shreds. The moral of the story is shit, 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 shit! <laughs> he prayer rabbits his way to freedom as the hyenas tell him to never return. Mufasa's death is a terrible tragedy. But to lose Simba... It is a deep, personal loss. But at least the antelope have grass to eat. Hey, Scar, I was meaning to ask about when you knocked me out earlier. Super suspicious. Oh, wait, everything's looking up. Never mind. Great and glorious future. Simba is woken by the fat guy and little guy you never see in comedy, named Timon and Pumbaa, played by Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella, who decide to take him in. Maybe he'll be on our side. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Hey. I've got it. What if he's on our side? Hey, I think I've got it. I'll just bet that if we follow those planets, we'll find Planet X. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of these guys. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they're not awful, they're acted fine, and the routines are harmless. I just never found them that funny. I mean, granted, I've yet to hear any food puns in this movie. Have they done food puns? I can't remember. Tastes like chicken. What's in you? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. Ooh, the little green film kind. I ain't like a pig. The irony is they would eventually get their own TV spinoff. And where those are usually death to television, they were actually much funnier there than they are in the movie. It almost never works that way. But honestly, I could probably deal with them better if it wasn't for... Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Yeah, you thought Let It Go was bad? For freaking years, everybody was singing this tune. Let It Go at least was decent and then ruined by being overplayed. This shit was annoying from day one and got only more annoying with every replay. Every time I wanted to listen to Be Prepared on the soundtrack, I was always outvoted by my friends with Hakuna Bite My Goddamn Tata. You know that one Christmas jingle that gets under your skin? Everybody has that one. Well, imagine it didn't just play around Christmas time, it played all freaking year round. But everybody loved it because, oh look, farts, farts, the pig is farting, it's funny because he almost said fart, but he didn't quite say fart. A Disney song has farts in it, that's amazing, but stinkiness is gold. Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata, fart, 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 ha ha ha. Go to hell, Hakuna Matata. Go to ear stabbing, flatulence loving hell. Hell! Whew, I'm sorry. I, I know I went overboard there. I just really had to let out some steam of the annoying song being overplayed. At least I know there isn't any more annoyance in our near future. So Simba grows up into Matthew Broderick, who spends years gazing up at the stars, ever wondering what they are. I always thought they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. Pumba, with you, everything's gas. Well, at least food puns have been replaced with fart jokes. Somebody once told me th that the great kings of the past are up there. <laughs> I tell you, if you got actual laughs like that when you did the producers, I'd, I'd return your calls. They come across a grown-up Nala who hunts them down. Don't worry, buddy, I'm here for you. Everything's gonna be okay. Again, not sure if I need this. Eh, it's Timon and Pumbaa. I definitely need this. Nala? Simba recognizes Nala, though, and they scream for joy, having not seen each other for years. Wait till everyone finds out you've been here all this time. And your mother, what will she think? Is that just weird writing or the world's, like, oddest running joke? You're the king. You're the king? And you never told us? He's one of three male lions, two male lions! How could you not figure this out? So after only knowing each other as kids and being reunited for three minutes, cue that love song! You've earned it! <laughs> I can't! Like I said, you've only known each other as kids and reunited for three minutes! I think the most romantic part of the song is when Timon and Pumbaa are singing. I at least believe their chemistry! We've really needed you at home. No one needs me. Nala insists that Simba returns home and takes responsibility. You think you can just show up and tell me how to live my life? But you don't understand. My podcast is gonna make me rich, man. Rich! Everything's destroyed. There's no food, no water. Simba, if you don't do something soon, everyone will starve. Although in hindsight, I guess I could just bring him here. What, plant life, water, food? I mean, you keep bumming it, I'll be right back. What wouldn't I understand? No, 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 it doesn't matter. Hakuna Matata. What? The face of every parent when they first heard that word. They have a big fight as Simba storms off, coming across Rafiki. Uh, enough already. What is that supposed to mean, anyway? It means Benson was cancelled too early. Ten-year run would have been perfect. You move fossils, boy. He reveals that he knows Simba's father and takes him to where he can be found. Look down there. It's a shit I took an hour ago. I'm very proud of it. Simba's father appears in the sky to help him find his way. You are my son and the one true king. Yes, yes, very touching emotional words, definitely. You did leave out three important words, though. Uh, <clears throat> Scar killed me! And this is honestly my biggest problem with the movie. You see, shortly after, we get this message. And by Disney standards, it's actually a very unique one. Rafiki whacks him on the head and tells him that the pain doesn't matter because it's in the past. Yeah, but it still hurts. Yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. 
from a studio that nine out of ten times the message is follow your dreams, listen to your heart. Wishes can come true. This one is saying, shit happens! You gonna cry about it? You gonna run away like a little pansy? Do something! Buck up! Soldier on, you little bastard! It's so rare we get a moral like that from Disney, and it's a valuable one that I think is really important. But here's the problem. He goes back to Pride Rock, we get a little comedy here and there, but ultimately he confronts his past, takes responsibility, and it blows up in his face. He admits to accidentally killing Mufasa, and nobody is behind him. No one even stops Scar as he backs Simba over a cliff. They just let him do it. Simba! I mean, I'm not gonna help you, I'm just gonna shout your name, but uh, Simba! What would your mother think? It's only when Scar whispers that he killed Mufasa and Simba forces him to confess that suddenly everybody's on his side. So just to make it clear, no matter what mistakes you made in the past, you should always go back and take responsibility for it. Because there's a chance maybe you didn't do it. However, if you know you did, like 100% it was you, <gasps> RUN LIKE HELL! Don't ever take responsibility. Your friends will turn on you. They'll dangle you over a cliff. God will strike lightning to remind you of the fiery pits of hell that await you. Run! Run! Nobody's got your back! I'm sorry, this is a huge disservice to the message. Hell, the most popular song in the movie is about dodging your responsibilities. This is kind of messed up when you really think about it. I'm surrounded by idiots. After that, it follows the typical Disney climax. A giant fight happens, mostly with a comedic lean to offset the mano e mano fight that's soon to follow. Who's the pig? Uh oh, they call him the pig. Are you talking to me? Shouldn't have done that. They call me Mr. Pig! Pumba, you are a pig. Oh, right. Uh oh, they call him the pig. They call me Mr. Pig! I guess an excuse to use in the Heat of the Night references. The kids love that. Simba corners Scar as he tries to weasel his way out of it. It is the hyenas who are the real enemy. It was their fault. It was their idea. Come on, Simba, don't believe the fake news! Simba lets him go, but only under one condition. Run. Run away, Scar. And never return. That line was a lot cooler when Iron said it. Even Scar looks kind of unimpressed. Yes. Yeah, I had a dead dad under my belt when I said that. You have a bug buffet. I think I own this one. <laughs> Scar tricks him, though, leading to one of the coolest shots in the movie. God, I want to see that on a t-shirt that says, I love you this much! Simba flips him over the cliff as the hyenas are angry he blamed them for everything. Which apparently is enough to warrant death. I'm honestly not that thrown off as we get to hear Ed's evil laugh. <laughs> you could literally give him a spin-off show of nothing but him laughing and I'd be okay. Simba takes his rightful place on the throne, which brings all the animals and plant life back. What were the politics of their regimes? As they celebrate the birth of a bouncing baby sequel. Oh, by the way, did we mention Scar might have had a son and another kid was born for- Never mind. So there it is, The Lion King, a massively impressive, yet far from flawless movie. The humor's kinda hit and miss, at times it can be a bit annoying, and yeah, the play out of the message bothered me a lot as a kid, and still bothers me as an adult. But most people, if you ask what the message is, still say it's to take responsibility for your past. So I guess the general idea is still gotten across. But despite its issues, it's still a massive film. The story feels big, the animation looks big, the music sounds big. It still deserves a lot of the attention it gets. At a time when Disney animators were dodging this project because they had interest in the next film that was following it, and we all know how amazing that turned out, Lion King played all its cards at the right time to the right audience. So much so, they'll see the exact same thing again. I guess that is a testament to how strong a bond it made with people, though. Whether in animation or animation, the popularity of The Lion King isn't fading out anytime soon. And as you can see, it's for good reasons. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm actually off to see the live action Lion King remake. The real one. There you go. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember, so you don't have to. 
It doesn't matter. Hakuna Matata. What? Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, this week, if you haven't uh, uh, heard, uh, Hurricane Barry has been sweeping its way through uh, the southern United States and has been causing tons of damage uh, in its wake. It's um, left millions of people without homes and without power. A lot of people have, you know, just lost everything to this terrible storm. So the uh, the charity that we're doing this week, we're going to do uh, Red Cross. Uh, they're very much focusing on this right now. And uh, we're going to try and put a link that goes directly to uh, Hurricane Barry Relief. Uh, if you want to give to other parts of Red Cross, they do wonderful work. You know, you certainly can. Uh, but this one is mainly going to be for uh, the Hurricane Barry Relief. So uh, please go donate what you can. A lot of people, like I said, have just lost everything. So please take a look, see what you can give, and be very much appreciated. Thank you so much.